What is a food film? To me, it doesn't have to be one that treats cooking and eating as its central subject. It just has to understand those things as an essential detail in its characters' lives. The best food films use food, the preparation of it, the eating, and the enjoyment of it, to more clearly articulate cultural specificity, complex relationships, and challenging emotions. Food on screen can tell us about geography, history, politics, and power. It can also make us incredibly hungry. Oh, I guess that is good. Um... I'm Simran Hands, film critic and food fanatic, and here are five food-related films and TV shows to remind you that the role cuisine plays in storytelling is more than just a cherry on top. In Paddington, Paul King's 2014 adaptation of Michael Bond's popular children's storybook series, our furry protagonist is obsessed with marmalade. It's so important to the character's identity, it's how we're introduced to him. They're right! We meet Paddington Bear, voiced by Ben Whishaw, in his native Peru on Marmalade Day. We watch him operate an elaborate system of pulleys and levers to harvest the bitter oranges that will be turned into marmalade via Aunt Lucy's special recipe. What's more, a quintessentially British condiment is, rather slyly, shown to originate from another part of the world. In Paddington, marmalade represents a taste of home, which is why he packs his suitcase with jars of the stuff en route to England. In London, he's taken in by the Brown family, where he has some trouble adjusting to his new surroundings. Yet by the end of the film, he's made a new home and a fresh batch of marmalade with his new family. Mmm, delicious. Hello, night night. In Lulu Wong's The Farewell, oranges hold a different significance. Here, the citrus fruit is presented as an offering to the main character's dead grandfather, laid on his headstone as a culturally specific gesture of respect. The film follows a young Chinese-American woman named Billy, played by the comedian Aquafina, as she travels from New York to Changchun to deal, or rather not deal, with her grandmother's terminal illness. Writer-director Wong shows how, in Chinese culture, food is often used to express care. Billy has promised the family that she won't let on that she knows Nai Nai is dying. Her guilt about the lie has made her lose her appetite, but she still accepts her grandmother's love in the form of a bite of scallion pancake. The Farewell also uses food as a way of talking about class, as when Nai Nai is outraged to discover that the fancy lobster she ordered for her grandson's wedding banquet has been replaced with cheaper crab. Luckily, the spread still looks pretty lavish. The food characters eat is often, rightly or wrongly, a visual shorthand for their social status. Gary Marshall's 1990 romantic comedy Pretty Woman is a very of its time retelling of My Fair Lady, in which Julia Roberts' downtown sex worker, through dating Richard Gere's rich playboy, is taught how to wine and dine like a proper lady. Vivian and her best friend Kit are shown to be more comfortable around finger food and bar snacks, not fine dining. This ain't a buffet, Kit. Vivian's new diet of escargot and expensive salads, which she learns comes at the end of the meal, is contrasted with Kit's diet of Chinese takeaways and fizzy drinks. Vivian's attempt to master the rules of eating in a posh restaurant is another way of showing her struggles to transcend her social class. In Pretty Woman, luxurious food symbolizes escape and fantasy, setting the table for a fairy tale that you'll want countless helpings of. From one romantic comedy to another, food is once again a useful narrative utensil. Bridesmaids, directed by Paul Feig, is best known for its infamous food poisoning scene. But the film has more uses for food than a simple catalyst for a comedy set piece. Our heroine Annie, played by Kristen Wiig, lost her bakery business to the recession. Unemployed and still single, Annie's baking is an expression of her femininity, her creativity and her work ethic. We see her decanting one perfect scoop of batter into a lonely cupcake case. She folds and paints fondant petals and eventually creates a single flawless cupcake. When Chris O'Dowd's Officer Rhodes invites her to share his bag of carrots, an attraction is sparked. You want a carrot? The unlucky in love Annie manages to mess things up, but uses her talent for baking to make amends with an I'm sorry carrot cake. Here, food manages to communicate more directly and more sincerely than words. So I ate your cake. Finally, it might be cheating to include a documentary series, but in Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations, the late great chef and writer uses food as an excuse to travel the world. There are many, many delicious episodes to choose from, but the one that always makes my mouth water is this one, set in Lisbon, with its focus on paired-back seafood dishes. This is the fat and the roll. Yeah. 
mashed up. Oh, yeah. A trip to the fish market shows the provenance of the ingredients and gives an insight into how the locals shop, while a different episode set in Penang looks at the role food plays in Lunar New Year celebrations, as well as a means of understanding how migration has influenced the way Malaysians eat and the country's mix of Chinese, Indian and Malay influences. Bourdain turns food into a vehicle of exploration and education, a way to get both our synapses and taste buds tingling. Everything I love in life, this is, this is it right here. Good luck for you, okay? Thank you. The venue for a food-oriented film or TV show doesn't have to be a restaurant, as long as it uses food to tell us something about a character's state of mind, help us understand their relationships better, situates them in the world. Where would we like it? Uh, over by the bar and transports us to a place of pleasure, I'll eat it. Which films and TV shows are on your tasting menu? Comment below and hit subscribe for more recommendations of what to watch on Prime Video.